Flash forward, Nick Brecken's senile. He ain't black box. He ain't black box. What was what? I think that was in Vancouver. You know what it is, Nick? What? It's October 23rd, 2013. This is Idle Thumbs 129, and I'm Chris Remo. I'm Jake Rodkin. And I'm Nick Reckon. Hey, Nick. Hey. What would you guys do if I said literally nothing for this entire podcast? We would probably not release the podcast. <laughs> I mean, or maybe we'd pretend it's the secret that you were there. Like, well, path like, of Idle Thumbs. God, you that would nothing. be really interesting. <laughs> yeah. Like if I said one thing at the beginning to get started right. and then just kind of just just sat here. Well, you want to give it a shot. Didn't say a single thing. Yeah, let's, no. We, <laughs> As we, now that I've said it, it would be really weird. It would be like doing an experiment. You should yeah. have, in fact, tried to conduct that experiment. I know, I know, I know. Fuck, damn This may, in fact, be an experiment. This may, in fact, <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right, when you least expect it. Yeah, yeah, what people don't know is this is our high concept Stanley Parable themed <laughs> episode. It, it is. Where we do wacky things and keep starting the episode over again. Actually, we, that was last week uh, when we actually started <laughs> yeah, right. the episode over again 10 times because it was a disaster. That was, yeah. that was yeah. Idle yeah. Thumb's Salacious Thumb or whatever the hell episode that was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Was, <laughs> this week we're just releasing 16 uh, MP3 files, mm-hmm. not prescribed with any number or sequence yeah all of which are actually functionally identical <laughs> <laughs> what if we did that what if we just kept releasing <laughs> the same audio file every week how long would be before people got really pissed this probably is, this one is your, this is the probably question you ask week. about everything i think life. yeah i think next week someone on Twitter <laughs> would say uh you guys put the same mp3 file out and then oh, and then and that's we, when we're silent you know <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what we could do we could release we could do this tonight. We could just release. We could just record the next like three months of intros, but then just put, put the same remaining like forty eight minutes of podcast. We finally made it to episode one hundred and fifty. Can you believe it? Two hundred out of thumbs. Anyway, this week we played the Stanley Parable. Oh, it'd be super good. We were inspired I mean, by it. It would be like super good. It wouldn't yeah. be good actually, actually at all. But. One out of every like 50 right. requests to our RSS feed <laughs> right. puts, oh, you on the sh- puts your RSS oh, reader man. on the shadow feed, which only gets wow. duped episodes from Has now anyone on. ever done that? That would be so easy yeah, it to would make really an RSS easy. feed where – God, I just wrote an RSS feed generator today. Like it would be so easy to make one that just pulls a random file for like one person out of every hundred. Oh, my God. <laughs> they get only Phaedrus episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Why? Wait, has anyone? That's only the most like listener hostile thing you could possibly <laughs> yeah. do. I know. Yeah. But it would be Subscribe a- to our podcast. <laughs> this is Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> or it seems like they just play the Stanley Parable every week <laughs> as, the, as the alternate of that. Or this is an empty RSS feed. Or God, that would be oh, so I'm, weird. I don't what I love. Everybody else would be like, "What was the Phaedrus episode this week?" <laughs> you guys be like, "Oh, it was, it was yeah. interesting." Well, that one guy would be like, "Oh, weird episode, guys." Like, yeah, oh, it seemed pretty yeah. normal to me. Like they wouldn't. God. They wouldn't go out of the way to like mention because they would assume everyone a else. Shadow RSS feed that just every like ten episodes right. gives them a slight variant. <laughs> right. The forum it's, link it goes to secret forum dumps. Was yours Twitter. only in the left channel this week? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. Should we actually talk if about Phaedrus no? like responds no. <laughs> to things occasionally, like in the right channel right. on one person's feed, but the podcast is otherwise identical. But it's just one of them has Phaedra's commentator. Just, <laughs> just commentary mode. It's yeah. a really good Phaedra's thing that mode. we thought of this two years ago so that next week some of our listeners are going to hear a really weird episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <clears throat> it's also good that most listeners got <clears throat> a different episode this week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Started well and talked about video games. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, one. some of them got some of them got the weird one where he described all of the plans that that we were doing right. the RSS feed. Some and of them, the yeah. episodes yeah. are releasing for the next yeah. year. Yeah. Some of them so. went through the right door. Yeah. <laughs> and saw the monitors. Uh, yeah. Some of them saw the monitors. Did yeah. you actually? 
I was about to start talking about the Stanley Parable. Should we talk about mm. the Stanley Parable? We should talk about the game that we played. We played a video game called the Stanley Parable. <laughs> and that was the end of that podcast. I don't know. I don't know how to talk about the game without just... <laughs> To talk, the game is well, entirely specific content, yeah. so to talk about the game <clears throat> kind of just ruins the what game. What was your expectation of the game, and did it meet your expectation? Well, I played, That's the question I played the Stanley Parable. When, oh, you played, you played it, an early I, version. I didn't play the mod, but I played it when it was in the IGF this year, where it didn't, I don't think it got nominated for much, which was a slightly frustrating experience. But mm. um, Stanley Parable, I think it started off as a Half-Life 2 mod, which you played, right, Chris? Uh, and inside of this game... Events happen. I don't know. It, it, the Stanley Parable feels like a game that came out because someone played Portal and just wanted to build a game that was about the weird relationship yes. between a first-person player and a voice that's talking to them. Right. So the Stanley Parable, you play as a guy named Stanley who is in an office, and then as you start to leave your office to go explore different things, the narrator reads is sort of narrating what's happening to you, and then you realize that you don't necessarily have to do what he says. And then from there, the game just devolves into complete madness. Right. Um, I, and that's, I think, been the premise since the original mod, and it was the premise It's the premise now. They they went and redid the entire game. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you guys play the demo for the Stanley Parable? I didn't. Oh. Why were people recommending the demo specifically? The demo for the Stanley Parable exists because of this problem, which was we don't know how to talk about the game uh. without you playing the game, but also just giving you a segmented chunk of this game wouldn't make sense God. because the game is just a complete So here's my question. So the is demo, there demo-specific content? Yeah, the demo's completely ah. unique. The demo God, is... God, that's good. The Stanley Parable demo is a demo about game demos, the same way oh. the Stanley Parable is a demo that's about That's why people games. were recommending the demo. Oh my God. Yeah. Now, having played the actual game now i want to yeah, play the, the demo that, that's like, hilarious ins- and weird inside of the demo oh one of the first things you see is a hallway that has framed art of great standalone demos including like the Jesus half-life one Christ. demo and Christ. uh but inside oh. of inside of the demo the narrator tells you about the demo and then he he pauses and says i'm now going to tell you how demos are made and you go into a warehouse room that has five doors that have like the five elements necessary for any demo that you go inside and experience each of them but then it, of course, gets all fucked, and he realizes that he's been telling you about the demo, but you've not yet seen the demo, and then the game goes insane, and you accidentally you know, go into some other crazy <laughs> space that is not intended to be part of the demo, and he freaks out. It's basically... Yeah. The, it's really good. I feel like spoiling the demo is fine, uh, but yeah. if you would then imagine that three times exponentially bigger, I guess that's the game. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. The, the demo has a room with, like, five booths that all have different emotions on them, like emotion labels that are supposed to sort of be the different feelings you're supposed to put a player through. But then when you go inside of them, it just affects the narrator. Like, it projects weird words and stuff, and then he starts experiencing despair and screaming at you and stuff. I don't know. It's, it's weird. Oh, and then you have to rate the demo on whether or not the demo would convert you to a buy. <laughs> Good. But yeah. then that's not active yet because you accidentally only got there because you, you haven't played the demo. It's good. It's yeah. a weird thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know how to talk about the game. Though. You can't really talk about the game. It's a it's it's a video game allegory, I guess. I don't know. Like, what? It's this game is just playing with the with video games. Like, it's just it's a game about video games. Clearly, and that's just what it is. Uh, it's more that than I thought than I expected. Actually, I didn't know much about the Stanley Parable. I I had heard like whispers like oh, the Stanley Parable, oh, the Stanley Parable. I had no idea what to expect from this game. I kind of I knew just you know basically from the tenor of what was being discussed, like that it was going to be some kind of, you know, metaphor for video games, but I didn't know that it was going to so directly be that. That part surprised me and was also the best part. Like the fact that it's just so blunt about that stuff, but then just also, I guess at the same time being really clever within that. I I don't know. Like it it hit different, um, different notes than I thought it would, but it also fucking nailed those notes, man. It's really good. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. How do you? T- how, what else do you say about it? What, what what more can you say about this video game? I don't know. It's weird. It's a weird game. It's weird that it exists. God, it's big. It's it's really really big. Why are you laughing, Jake? You're laughing. At- <laughs> what? You're just you're just hanging me out to dry here on the Stanley Parable. Well, how do you talk about the game? <laughs> Jake's gonna die. Sorry. Jake's about to die. I, 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 I jump back in. I noticed that at some point Chris had stopped talking. Like he said he was going to. <laughs> So then I decided to stop talking oh, and see how far you would go. Yes, and you went really fucking far. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
my god. Oh god. <laughs> you know what's funny though? Like <laughs> What's funny is that when I was playing the Stanley Parable, I noticed that I was starting to reflexively do things that he was saying, not even, like, playing along. Like, I was already playing along. Like, you walked in circles on the floor that time? Right, but, but, but there was a time where he was just like, <laughs> Chris is going to die. <laughs> it's the last we ever heard of Chris Remo, when he played a joke by not talking and then choked to death and then actually just died and never spoke again. <laughs> The last thing Chris said was nothing. Actually, <laughs> his final words were some upset thing about a bullshit RSS feed. <laughs> anyway, sorry, what were you saying? I was saying that I was just doing things that he was saying, uh, but then I realized that I was actually doing... I mean, like, clearly... Like, like when he talks about your feet. Well, yeah, he talks about your feet, but when he says, like, you know, press... Press 8 to continue or whatever. Right. And it's clearly just, you know, parodying uh, video games in, in those moments. But then I realized that I was just also, like, reflexively doing that stuff in a way that I would do when I was actually playing a video game. Like, I was actually just yep. doing the thing. Like, I got an achievement because I was slamming spacebar so much that I thought I, like, I just, uh, I like to jump in games, so I'm just slamming spacebar, and I got an achievement for, like, you, you can't, can't jump. jump in this game. The last achievement in the list of Stanley Parable achievements is just impossible achievement. You cannot get this achievement. Yeah, and I believe you can't get it. I would trust that they would because Val sure. doesn't care. Right? Yeah, no, they don't. They don't on care about on Xbox, it. they would probably care. Um, yeah, they would. What was I just? A, oh, yeah. It's it's amazing how many layers this game has on top of itself that all are in fact meaningless nonsense. Yeah. Right. Like I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. The fact that this game is a game about a guy who sits at a computer pressing buttons arbitrarily. Yeah. And then maybe it's ambiguous that he disappears into a fantasy world, but maybe it's real, but maybe whatever. Yeah. But then hitting E or clicking the mouse just makes the arbitrary sounds of a guy sitting at his desk pressing keys yes. on a keyboard. Yeah. Fuck. Yep. yep. It's, can... ri- it's a ridiculous game. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. I I also feel like I have numerous weirdly critical thoughts about what the Stanley Parable is and what it means about video games, but I don't know how to express them in a way that doesn't make me just sound like a big fucking doofus. So I don't know how, you know, like... Um, I think you should just do it. I don't know how to say anything. I don't know. I got nothing. I mean, yeah. I've put a lot of hours into this game. Yeah? I I noticed. I I, I thought you left it on. I that. It because said, you were in there for a long it time. It says that I have like 25 hours in Steam because I did okay. leave it on overnight. Okay. But I did probably actually play it for about four hours. Uh, uh, which is a lot for, for, for that, what this yeah. is. Yeah. Um, it is. Yeah. And even then when you were sitting down and playing it, I saw stuff that I hadn't yet seen. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, it feels like, um, I don't know this is a meaningless thing to say, but it feels like somebody would have made this game already and made, like, the tiniest chunk of it, and it would have been hilarious and successful. You know what I mean? That's and what the, the fact, mod was, though. Probably. I guess so. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. I just... I didn't I didn't play the mod, so I feel like... I guess I'm behind. But it feels like this, you know, like... Ugh. The fact that this is so large is is shocking, in a way. Yeah, we like went down a couple paths <laughs> that just lasted about 18 yeah. times longer than I expected them to. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, it's it's weird to be playing this game that is nothing but walking down authored content corridors. Yeah. But the the self-awareness of it and the sheer volume of it uh, You also probably can't discount how good that voice actor is. I don't know who that is, but man, like we Chris is not going to participate in this episode. <laughs> no, he's not going to do it. But, uh, We're on our own. What happens if I stop talking? No. That's the real question. <laughs> Chris and I met uh, Davey, last name I'm not going to remember, and Chris isn't going to contribute the name to the episode, so we're not going to know. Um, one of the two leads on the Stanley Parable, and he told us about that, about the process of finding that guy, because the guy was also in the mod. Mm, um, okay. Yeah, that's what I was wondering about. I didn't, I yeah. didn't know if this was something that That guy's did, been sort of the happened. defining element of this game, I believe, okay. yeah. for its the duration of its existence. But that's it sounded like... There wasn't really a casting call or anything. He just was like, well, I don't have any money and this is the thing I want to do. I maybe How do I find voice actors? Maybe I'll just go look online to see where voice actors are. And just found some site where voice actors uploaded their portfolio. And he's like, that guy sounds good. And he was a guy who just had not done a ton of professional voice work before and said, video games seem like a thing that I'll do. Um, Which is why there's an amazingly high-grade sounding voice actor inside of... Like, he sounds like... 
Stephen Fry. I was about to say, he sounds like Stephen Fry at Little Big Planet. Uh, Little Big Planet, or like yeah. the guy who reads the Harry Potter audiobooks, yep. uh, audiblepodcast.com slash wizard. <laughs> but it's just some dude yeah. in a Half Life mod. Like, that's, yeah. that in and of itself so is notable. What was the mod like? I don't know because I didn't play it. Oh. Someone here has Someone played, here the played the mod. Um. <laughs> Okay, fine. I, to- <laughs> <laughs> I unlocked Chris by forcing yeah. the paradox where nobody's... <laughs> yeah. Um, the mod was actually very similar to this. Um, what was funny about it... So, it's actually... I have less to say about the, what the mod itself was like as much as having already played the mod, mm. which was very similar to this. Yeah. It was funny because my experience of the the mod was you you play through it and... Uh, you, oops, you keep doing what this does where the game just keeps iterating on your series of choices. Um, and while I was watching you, because I'd already internalized, like, how the Stanley, how a, the Stanley Parable game works, um, <clears throat> it felt like for a while it was just totally linear because the game is constructed to just feel that way. Like, no matter what, especially because you were playing it we, super. We also got like, on one rapidly. specific path that was heavily about it restarting itself and going insane. I oh, think. is that not as normal? No, that weird thing with the... Wait, really? That's only, like, not, not everyone hits that, yeah. I don't know. Oh, wow. You just chose one... The specific... confusing path or whatever? Yeah, you, you, yeah the, all that crap with the with the line on the floor? Yeah, you just... That was just one arbitrary route that you... Uh, <laughs> it, it faded. It, it, like, cross-dissolved <laughs> into the middle of really? the playthrough, so you couldn't tell. But anyway, what were you saying, Chris? Oh, I thought it oh, was I was just going to say, it was... First. I had to, like, readjust my brain to remembering how this game works, because as the person who wasn't playing, but was just watching you play it, but having had played a version of the Stanley Parable before, which, you know, the specifics of the content were different, but a lot of the things in it were the same... I was like, oh, this fe-, I was just sort of in my brain just collapsing it to like, oh, when he made the bigger version of it, he just kind of made it more linear and had there be less, you know, right. fewer choices in it. That was like what my brain was saying as I was watching you play like the first five right. things. I'm like, oh, this is obviously what everyone would do. And then it just becomes totally insane. And it's so like wait, obviously yeah, it, not oh, no, it, it turned out that, that chunk that felt really linear is was actually <clears> – <throat> Because Nick had gone down one particular path that just gave the impression of the game putting him down a linear series of resets. <laughs> so the, res- the resets I, aren't a th- <clears throat> like normally a thing. Like well, the, the game eventually the game <clears throat> resets itself, but that yeah, yeah, that yeah. that one condensed chunk. Okay, okay, I didn't find that until I was like two hours into the game, uh, okay. and I was like, I've uncovered it. I've uncovered the truth of what this game is, and then that just also stopped. The like, first okay, thing Nick Reckon well, sees. Yeah, but then yeah, then <laughs> better at games. For me, well, <laughs> be honest here. <laughs> Except that for Nick, it instead felt like, oh, so I guess this game is like tutorialized. Right, exactly, right. Yeah, 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 Whereas yeah. for me, it was like, this is revelatory. It's finally all exactly. starting to connect together. Oh, that's interesting. oh, it stopped doing that now. Okay. Yeah. I guess I don't yeah. know, what's ha- I don't know huh. what anything yeah. means. It's okay. super good. I love that. It's, it's bizarre. Um, I asked uh, I asked <clears throat> Davey Reedon. I asked Davey Reedon on Twitter if they were tracking any statistics for this game. Not because I actually like care for any like... <laughs> real uh, <coughs> consumable value, but I was just... I yeah, know just this out is, of curiosity. They, they built yeah. a game of the source engine and Valve tracking. has aggressive yeah. tracking stuff, but just knowing what's the first thing that every, like mm-hmm. that people do, what's the... You know, what makes people stop? Or just like, yeah. okay, they've done this, then do they inevitably go... Because mm-hmm. when I played it the first time, I made a very specific set of choices, and then... Um, I put my friend Jared in front of the final build, and he did the exact first two playthroughs that I did. So, mm-hmm. And it was I just it, that immediately made me want to know. So yeah. I'm just I'm just imagining but you did nothing related, <laughs> Nick, to what to what I had seen. I'm just imagining the respectful mom playing this game, <laughs> just being completely like baffled and writing up the review. Of, like this game keeps restarting. There's something wrong with this game. Like there's got to be somebody out there who's played this game and thought it was actually defective. This well, episode you guys must see? be the most baffling, stupid episode for people who don't know what the Stanley Parable is. Yeah. Good Christ. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, everyone. Please play the Stanley Parable. Please restart this podcast. Yeah. 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 Now that you've listened to this much of it, right. it will now allow you to experience it again from the beginning with more context of oh. what you're hearing. Um, did you guys see the weird – so there was a period in between when the Stanley Parable was just kind of a mod that was out there and when it was like very obviously in development as what it is now or at least 
it, there was a period where it wasn't quite necessarily clear what the guy was doing next. Or at least that's what it seemed to me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he was just releasing like weird trailers and stuff that didn't really have anything to do with anything. But like they had the narrator from the Stanley Parable, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, there was one he released that was like based on mail he got from someone who was complaining about the game. And it was like – it was f- fucking fascinating. You should go to the Stanley Parable Steam page and look through the videos and look for the look for the one with the narrator responding to someone named Raphael uh because it call Antonio <laughs> no maybe uh, probably not uh and uh the the like the it's someone complaining about how the game like didn't make him feel powerful and stuff and the, like the oh, the narrator like Sorry. the thing he wrote for the narrator was amazing and the guy delivered it in an incredible w- way I, this is another thing where you can't, you just can't talk about it without yeah. just saying what all the things are, which I don't want to do. Um, but I, one of the, I guess, I guess we can use that as a, as, as a, a seg into the, um, how this, why this game was successful, or at least why David Reedon believes it to be successful in, the, in some interviews he's done this week. Like this game sold 100,000 units and he, which is in like its first 72 hours. Or yeah, which is fantastic for like a what, two, three person team? Yeah. Um, it was the two leads, and I think they had a few sort of other people doing Yeah, contractors level work. and stuff, yeah. plus the narrator. And uh, anyway, it's obviously like fantastically successful for them. And he said he puts a lot of that on just the marketing for the game, like all the weird trailers and hmm. demos and stuff they did that were all completely custom content. Like those trailers were like, had. Just like a seven minute you like unique script that the guy read the whole way through um that didn't like and with video that was just he just made a video to go along with it that really has almost nothing to do with the game itself except in theme I suppose um and then the demo Jake that you were describing, and then also at Pax, he had a totally different demo that was just about Pax, yep, like that <laughs> it's like. Also, he said that he, he they did a builds for a couple like let's play people, but he gave them custom builds a week before the game came out, and the narrator talked to that particular player Jesus. and also made some in jokes for that those particular communities and stuff. Ah, that's so good. Wow. Fuck, that's so good. Yeah. Wow. Damn it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's really good. That's so fun. Ugh, God, that's so interesting because. Um, well, it's all very similar though to what Valve did with Portal Two. <laughs> Valve didn't go as far as the Let's Play stuff, but Valve. Valve's Portal 2 demos were at PAX, I think, maybe, or it might have been at two different shows, but each of them, GLaDOS had stuff to say specifically about the mm-hmm. event that you were at. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. It's, that, that Let's Play stuff, I think, is particularly hilarious, though, because yeah. the... Um, You're just like, going to make a stupid YouTube and I go, what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, so I, I'm not going to talk about the game a lot, but we, you know, uh, we put out Space Base DF9 at Double Fine last week, and one of the things, it's like a very player-oriented simulational game, and, uh, you know, it's still an alpha, but whatever, people are already doing Let's Plays of it. And it's that is by far, like, the biggest marketing that game has gotten because it doesn't have, like, ads or anything. So, I mean, it's still, again, it's still an alpha. But, like, seeing how insanely familiar the audience of those Let's Plays are with the people they follow on YouTube who do them, like, it's a really specific relationship. Like, Nick and I, we were talking about this the other day, about, I forget what caused the topic to come up, but, like... Uh, PewDiePie. Oh, right, right. Uh, I, but I forget why that I forget why that came up. But anyway... Um, uh, old PewDiePie. Like, these people have such dedicated audiences with such, like, specific familiarity with the person in question. Uh, I cannot think of, like, a better way to tap into that than to provide something that is, like speaking directly yep. to that person at the same time that it's speaking to the audience because usually they'll go on and it's the they'll do the let's play as their first impression yeah. so that they don't like it's the problem we always run into with burning cast where we don't want to talk about things before we're actually talking into the microphone like the fact that the person doing the let's play is becoming aware of that reference like in real time as they're playing it right ah it's so good yep and this game is obviously the perfect game to to promote that way Playing the Stanley Parable is a weirdly cathartic experience for me, I think, um, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. – <laughs> <coughs> sorry. <clears throat> it's good It's good to play a game that just is entirely about <sighs> – like, <laughs> it, it's, it's a game that's entirely it's, – it's 
none of the systemic elements of game of a game are present inside of the Stanley Parable, except I guess a little bit of the narrator sometimes remembering what you've done and calling it back. Like that's other than there's probably a fair amount of that. It's really hard to. know. I mean, it's tr- it, it is hard to know, but I mean, it's obviously tracking tons of stuff all the time, right? I mean, when Nick found that room, wasn't that like based on with the stuff on the wall? Wasn't that based on all the things you've been doing, or was it I not? Don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that's true. I think that it probably it is just feel based like on stuff you can do, so that it feels like it's yeah. But well, yeah, but they still, but they still, the things that you end up doing are still the ones track, right? Or maybe not. I don't know. No, that's what that. Oh, really? That was what I'm saying. That was entirely uh, yeah. inside of a weird bubble in the game. That was not. Nothing in that room was predetermined, or nothing in that room was dynamic. It was all uh-huh. you just didn't know. So that was with the texture just, on the wall, literally. Yeah, crazy. But uh, it's just nice that this is a game that sort of says you're not the only one who finds this aspect of gameplay or of of modern video games ridiculous. It is yeah. completely, clearly, fucking ridiculous and dumb. A lot of the like deterministic garbage inside of games, but also. It's immediately happily telling you it's fucking fun to play at the same time. Like that's yeah. It's, it's no, it's true. It's 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 okay to shit on it and sort of revel in it <laughs> at the same time. And right. I, I really like that about this game. Like it 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 I like occasionally. The, I like that metaphor suggesting that you shit on something and then revel in the shit. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like exactly what this game is doing. Like it, yeah. it, it never actually even gets that cynical about it. Like the narrator will get upset with you or sort of he'll. But it's never like just saying yeah. the thing that I'm pointing out is intrinsically garbage. He's sort yeah. of going, well. Well, the funny thing about this is that the funny thing about this game is – so I guess actually I I don't necessarily 100% um, – I may not be thinking of the same – when you talk about this part of games, I'm not necessarily sure I, I'm on okay. – I'm thinking of the same one you are. Maybe I am. But one of the things that's funny about the Stanley Parable is that – the way it's different from every other game in which this is the kind, this is the way you experience content mm-hmm. is that every single one of those games basically is predicated on doing something right or not. Whereas in this game, it always, it, it always, 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 always responds like to the thing you do, uh, in a graceful way. Like you can't do a thing in the game unless the game will, will, um, uh, right. Yeah. Um, what is the word I'm looking for? Like, there's no failure. Here. Yeah, yeah. You just keep it. Just keeps keeps going. It's weird. I mean, every other game that is content driven, that is based on like um, just shepherding the player through scripted content that someone wrote, like you're, it's gonna say, oh, whoops. Well, that you, that is just incorrect. Yeah. Like, try it again. Yep, well, I think- Whereas this game, I, <laughs> I guess, by only ever doing that, always it kind of does the opposite because I it think- always has another way to go. Well, I think the, 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 well, oh god, I was about to spoil something. Go ahead, Jake. Oh, I I think that like scripted content based games are at their best when they go out of their way to say yes as much as they possibly can. Like I know that that's been a Tim Schafer thing forever, even though a lot of the stuff that he makes is still very much like Psychonauts who die from platforming or mm-hmm. uh, adventure games that he makes. You just get stuck and the game can't go on. But a lot of the stuff that Tim does as much as he possibly can is any possible corner that a player can sort of bump into try to put a piece of content there that will entertain them and then steer them back in the right direction which I think is not exactly the same philosophy as this but it's still sort of trying to say I understand that what you're doing or I understand that what you're doing is valid but this game just there's no it eliminates the gate part of that as well and just sort of you just continue to just walk forward. Right, yeah. I don't know if that, it's I don't weird. Know if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it totally makes sense. That's, that's what I was trying to say in too many words. I've realized as I've tried to actually form complex sentences that I'm actually suffering from the effects of sleep withdrawal. <laughs> <laughs> like it's actually affecting <laughs> the speed at which like the neurons in my brain are firing right. or something. Yeah. I don't even – that's not even a thing probably what I just said. But like <laughs> – I'm actually having tr- – like when I have a thought in my brain that requires more than like two verbs, I'm having trouble <laughs> I'm having trouble putting it together well. Yeah, this is – this is a bit of a goofy week. All that I've played is the Stanley Parable and more Super Mario 3D Land, which I don't have a whole lot to say about except <clears throat> people had been telling me for like the first two or three weeks that I've been playing it, get past World 8 because that's when the game gets good. 
And it, it does. Okay, well, here's the thing. I enjoyed, I enjoyed the first eight worlds a lot. Just watch the first five episodes. It gets really good after that. I enjoyed the first eight worlds quite a lot. It was super, uh-huh. like all the stuff that I said before about enjoying yeah, yeah, yeah. it holds true. But it also, my one of my biggest criticisms uh-huh. of it was it felt very much like the modern Nintendo level of platforming difficulty where every level feels like half as long as you remember it from when you're a kid and you wonder, is it because I'm old and I'm good at this now or is it because they're just kind of being mm-hmm. wimps or whatever? And then the difficulty right. got... it ticked up a little bit in the last world and then I completed it and then the game did a thing that is surprising to me because I don't expect Nintendo to do this after the 16-bit era. It just wiped the board and presented an entire new eight worlds of map and they're Mm. all at the level of difficulty Uh, of like 90s Nintendo Wait, so I have have a question about this game because I actually don't know. This is a really, really stupid question. Do do modern Mario games in in this vein, does Mario have health or does he have the same... Like hit. Um, in in Mario, starting with Mario sixty four, Mario Sunshine, Mario yeah. Galaxy, Mario does have health. But in Mario three D Land on the three DS is a new series entirely, and it's well, back to the classic thing. Uh-huh. He just because okay. New Super Mario Brothers didn't have health. <clears throat> new Super Mario Brothers, right? So the Mario three D Land games like kind of shift. split the difference between. Well, Mario had health in the, in that a mushroom makes you big, and if you get hit, you get small. It's cla- it goes back. To right. Back that's to well, that's not what like I mean. Health, right. I mean no, like health, health points. Meter. Yeah, no. They yeah. took the health meter back out uh, in New Super Mario Brothers, but Mario yeah. 3D Land is made by the Galaxy Sunshine 64 team, but mm-hmm. it, it goes back to the standard, you are big, okay. you are small. Right, then you're dead. Um, yeah. yeah, then you're dead. Um, it's, <laughs> you're big, you are small, and then you're dead. I, I won't talk about this game too much, but I am... Fully obsessed with button. it. Yeah. It it presses all of the correct buttons that I expect out of a Mario game. Like it's I it's it folds in so much of the stuff that I like <clears throat> about Mario Galaxy, but it also mm-hmm. folds in so much of the stuff that I like about the really old games, which I've been frustrated with not appearing yeah. in New Super Mario Brothers forever. But getting past the eighth world and then just having a Mario game where I die all the fucking time because of my own inability to navigate the platforming challenges that are put there it versus like I got to world 8 and had 65 lives uh, in the main playthrough and now I'm down to 3 lives because wow. and I'm only in world 2 does the that, game end if you lose those? Uh, I think that you just wipe back to the beginning of the world <coughs> mm. versus whereas when you die you wipe back to the beginning of the level um, mm. but I'm not sure mm-hmm also, I unlocked Luigi in, in the year of Luigi, which is good. Are you playing as Luigi now? I am. I got to do it. I'm going to spoil a minute of Mario 3D Land, but I, I it's because it was really, really enjoyable to me. You you rescue Princess Peach at the end of goddamn World Eight, like you do, and then everyone's happy. But then Mario walks off the screen, and he, he's been following all these postcards that that Princess Peach has been sending him, showing that she's you know getting carried to Bowser's castle. He picks up a postcard. And it shows Luigi in jail, uh, and he goes, you know, Mario like freaks out, and I'm just like, okay, I guess, I'm, I guess now I have to rescue Luigi. But then it turns out that Luigi was just in the first castle, and you get him. so. Oh, <laughs> it, really, it presents this crazy, or it's a new story where you play through the game again to rescue Luigi, but yeah. instead you just play through six levels, and then you just get Luigi. He's like, oh, it's me, Luigi. You can play as me now, and then the game is, is goes. Well, what's insane your goal after that. you rescue Luigi? I have no idea. Live it up. <laughs> Just, I think the goal at that point is just beat. I need to know what Mario's dramatic motivation is. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I could <laughs> tell you. I have Luigi now, and uh, <laughs> that's all that I need. That's but, the end uh, of Mario's arc. It was. It's. Yeah, that game. It has all the nice art that looks like the old Mario. It's as hard as the old Mario games, but it's actually doing interesting things with sort of 2D, 3D hybrid platforming. Mm-hmm. And Luigi's in it, and he has a way goofier voice and jumps better. So does he actually jump better, or you just mean he looks better when he jumps? No, I mean he has. It's the same Mario versus Luigi breakdown from like Super Mario Brothers Two, where Luigi is uh, a little bit more floaty and weird, but he gets a little bit more height and distance does a little, in his jump. Foot wiggle. It's like his momentum is different, but he can also yeah. his jump has a slightly different arc to it. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's probably the last time I'll ever talk about Super Mario 3D Land. That's probably but not true. Super Mario 3D World comes out oh, in a right. few weeks, okay, so fine. maybe it's I'll just true. kill myself and buy a Wii U. That was the segment of Mario Chat. Yeah. <laughs> Jake. Whatever. <laughs> no, it's good. It's funny because it's a weird like segment of gaming that I just have no exposure to right now because I don't have a 3DS and I'm, I don't have a Wii U. So yeah, I just, I I, I, for the first time in my life, I don't have a current Nintendo console. It's really weird. It's yeah, it's been a weird couple of years of, of that for me as well. But now, yeah. Doug gave me his extra 3DS because he bought the XL, and now, yeah, Super Mario 3D Land is my saved life. by Doug. Saved by Doug. Yep. 
I don't know what else there is to talk about in regards to that or anything else. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I, I, I don't know. I didn't play any games other than that one. I did see your notable Spelunky playthrough where the sound was off. That was fantastic. That was the rest. Oh, uh, yeah. That was, so not, that was good. Was but not, um, not, not all we ever talked about <laughs> is Mario can't, 3 can't talk about Spelunky. 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 I'm restraining myself. I'm just going to say, I'm not going to go into it, but I will say it's all I want to talk about. But I'm not going <laughs> to. You know what I mean? Like, you I, need Spelunky today I, to oh replace God. Dota today. Well, see, that's what the that's what the daily challenges have just been. Like, the daily challenges have just become my fucking vlog. Yeah. Like, I just get home and I do my daily challenge and I just talk about whatever. It's ridiculous. It's little, and Nick, it's Nick and I have been doing some of them. I actually really enjoy it. We, we need to figure out a better solution for getting them up on YouTube and stuff. But, like, um, we we stream occasionally from the Idle Thumbs office. So we do it live. We do the daily challenge live. And then that's actually that's it. I just There's no end. <laughs> yeah. This is what happens. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'll stop. But it's I, okay. I really like Splunky. We've, we've got into Mario 3D. I love Spelunky. Dota. Dota had a big patch this week. It's, it's like a whole different Are you game. excited for it's that really patch? Weird. It's like a whole different Are you excited game. for Dota 3, a.k.a. this patch? Yeah, <laughs> it's really weird. I'm not going to talk about Dota, but man. This episode is going to be hated by Sony. This is like, it's going to be the. the <laughs> it's not going to be hated for a unified reason, but we're just spreading the hate around right, as much as right. possible. God, can. have you guys played Far Cry 2 recently? Uh. <laughs> Maybe we should just play some Far Cry 2 and then come back from a break. People would love that. <laughs> Alright, if you're spying on us right now, we're about to do Far Cry 2 on the Twitch. So tune in for that. We're probably not. Don't actually. Don't, don't. Okay, yeah. we'll, we'll be back in a minute. Okay, yeah. bye. 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 Chris Remo writes Luminous. Nine fifty nine fifty nine nine point one million points. Idle Thumbs writes: League of Legends versus S two Dota game. Good online multi versus shitty one. Chris Ramo writes: Stuff to remember. July eighth two thousand nine press conferences. Molyneux Twitter. Milo comment. Left for Dead booth story. Stuff to remember from Chris Ramo. <laughs> Nick Brecken writes: What is skateboard? Jake oh, Rodkin writes. Spielberg oh. loves a tear. Remember his <laughs> words. What? We used to write email to us? Yes. yes. <laughs> Nick Brecken writes stuff. E3. <laughs> Hilarious Kojimo announcement fake out. Oh, Idle Thumbs writes podcast. Nick Brecken writes when are you guys recording? That was March 27th, 2009. Ducking out early to web at. Ed- telltalegames.com and hr at telltalegames.com <laughs> got some errands to do which need to happen during business hours and I worked a full Saturday so I'm ducking out early see you ladies and gents you tomorrow that from, from Idle Jake <laughs> you said that from questions at Idle Thumbs Up yes March 17, 2009 Nick Brecken writes a Burnout 3 is the best game in dot 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 email uh, content a Burnout 3 is the best game in my life Welcome to Reader Mail. Oh, hi. Hello. Mm. Alan Mulhall writes, Killer Queen. Oh, hey, Thumbs. The guys over at Video Games Hot Dog were talking about an indie game called Killer Queen on their latest podcast. It sounds like it takes the resource collection gameplay from Pikmin 2, Sean rolls his eyes, and combines it with the team dynamics of Dota 2. Sean perks up. Sounds like it might be up Idle Alley. Cheers, Alan Mulhall. That's all there is, but it sounds like maybe we it should look at that cool. game. Yeah. Sean rolled his eyes. <laughs> well, I figured Sean needed to be on this podcast in yeah. some capacity. <laughs> Sean is in Ireland. Yes. He's present in the spirit of his distaste. Mm. But then his interest. And his excitement. Yeah. Um, Idle Alley. I mentioned that because I, I like felt Idle bad Alley. that we forgot to talk about where Sean was at the beginning of the episode. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Whenever we forget to announce that someone's not here, I feel bad for them. It's always me. Sometimes it's Sean, like this week. Yeah. Hope that makes you feel better. Um, it's hard to search yes. for that game for obvious reasons. Killer yes. Queen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean it's. Just... Oh, Killer it's Queen a we'll it's a two player Hero. arcade. G- no, a twelve player. Whoa. Game. Crazy. Yeah, right, we should look this up. All right. Uh, what's next? Andre C. Campos writes, Hello, Thumbs. I think your podcast player is really slick and all-around awesome. Did you guys develop it yourselves? 
Am I able to find that code somewhere? Cheers. Andre C. Campos. Um, that was developed by Mike Watson. Um, he is a cool guy who used to work with um, Jake and other people at Telltale and now works at OpenDNS here in San Francisco with Doug Tobacco, who is also a uh, former Telltale and, uh, and Idle Thumbs web guy. Yeah, Doug and Mike are our web guys. Um, you could probably find Mike on Twitter at in underscore orbit and ask him about it there if you want to talk to him about weird web front and stuff. But yeah, he wrote that himself mm-hmm. and had a fun time making sure that it can play the podcast in acceptable formats, including things that Firefox hates, like MP3 files. Yep. Mm. Yeah, that's a pain. <laughs> I'm sorting through that stuff right now. I think that it's on Firefox. I think it secretly just runs a small invisible Flash player. Yeah, that's generally the fallback. Because yeah. mm-hmm. Firefox will play MP3s through the Flash plugin, but it won't play MP3s themselves because of licensing. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so uh, Mike is cool. Um, uh, um, Scott D. Williams writes, Not for the podcast, Super Smash Brothers <laughs> Melee documentary. Hey, Thumbs. I couldn't think of a way to make this into a question for the podcast, but I thought it was something you guys might be interested in. I was recently directed to a documentary on YouTube about some of the professional Super Smash Smash Brothers Melee players. It's a nine-episode series that looks at it like it probably didn't have much of a budget, if any, but it's absolutely fantastic. The documentary is really well made, and the stories are beautifully told. Episode three was especially gripping for me. Each episode is roughly 20 to 30 minutes long. You should check it out. The Smash Brothers. Thanks, Scott Williams. I've been hearing nothing but really huge praise for this documentary series, but I haven't watched it yet. Mm. Um, Also, hearing about it makes me want to play Smash Brothers. (laughs) Man. I uh, like that we're we're just reading info at idlethumbs.net. I know, right. This is just recommendations at idlethumbs.net. That's not a real. Don't send that to that. (laughs) Uh, That email address does not exist. Matt Rasmussen. The relationship between game design and live streaming. Hi, Thumbs. I've been interested lately in the relationship between game design and live streaming slash Let's Play style video content. Developers have different takes on such content, from Nintendo's approach of denying derivative works monetization on YouTube to supporting approaches of the devs of Lord's Management games and other esports games, but most approaches are more around the games than part of the gameplay content itself. Some devs seem to have cracked it. Splunky's daily challenges have built a structure around which people want to share their daily experiences, ex- extending not only the life of the game for those individuals, but also the discourse around it, as it's an experience that's eminently shareable. I don't know if you intended for this aspect to play out just how it has, but I feel it's worked well in the game's favor. By you, he means Derek you. Oh, right. Sorry. Uh, what aspects of games' designs do you feel have played well into the new culture of streaming gameplay? Do you think more can or even should be done to encourage this? Should devs design towards the shared experience or focus on the players themselves? What pitfalls do you see surrounding these concepts? I'm also interested in hearing your thoughts on the streamer's side of things. I'm organizing an indie game charity marathon this weekend, and one of the challenges we face is trying to share cool vertical slices of games we're interested in, despite them not always being the most streamable. Is it possible to turn a personal experience, for instance, an atmospheric ghost game like Gone Home, into something compelling for an audience without ruining the value of the developer's intended relationship with the player? I'd love to hear your thoughts. With the new consoles each having built-in streaming capabilities, it feels like we're just seeing the beginning of all this. Baboo, Wizard, Fuck Nick, etc. Matt. P.S. The Marathon's Indie Games for Good at IGGMarathon.com if you guys are interested in tuning in. He means IGGMarathon.com slash wizard, but we'll let mm. it slide. <laughs> Hopefully he means that. Uh, yeah. I like Man. that a lot about Splunky. <clears throat> it's really weird to think about how streaming is just taking over the world yeah it's becoming huge. how the idea like of sharing single, the idea of sharing a singular experience yeah like yeah, it's weird because if you went YouTube, back that's all he does if you went back like six seven years ago the zeitgeist was we are going to all be playing multiplayer games we're all gonna be playing like mmos because it's gonna be cool yeah. like you're gonna, be, you're gonna share this experience with your friends because they're like right over there in the game Mm-hmm. And now it actually seems to be – I don't give a shit about the guy who's playing that game well, on a separate uh, shared th- – yeah. I just want to share what I'm doing in this experience that is actually like a thing that is worth sharing. Like it's actually like an experience that's like right. built for 
yeah, it's weird. It's weird. How, yeah, and like games are being built for that now. Like for sure, people are taking this shit into account. It's weird. I think it's good that. Well, it wouldn't be good if all games took that into account, obviously. But I think it's a good force to take into account because I think it's a good. I it I think it often pulls games in good directions. Like if you make games that do bear up well to streaming, it probably means you've made a game with a pretty big possibility space and uh you know interesting potential for um variety and like God, robustness man. over a long period of time like the, those the qualities that make for good for good let's play games i think are often uh good qualities obviously that's not an absolute thing and you wouldn't in any way want that to be applicable to like all games or maybe even most games but i think that it allows especially indie developers to um, succeed with games that you might often think would require like large teams or are too niche to be successful or like a lot of games that seem on their surface to be obscure and difficult to get into can actually end up reaching a very big audience because they work they people want to try them because they see them they see the potential of them realized in let's plays i'm thinking of like crusader kings is i think a great example of that like that's a game where i think a lot of people would if they just saw that game on steam or something and it didn't have a big marketing budget behind it which it surely doesn't you, you might just say wow if this isn't already my thing this this is pretty arcane like yep. i don't know if i would get into this but you see the let's play and you 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 kind of skip over the part where right at that moment you have to push through it yourself you get to go straight to like what is the potential of this wow i'm actually seeing someone explore the potential of this game in a way that is not massaged or like mm. created through some marketer's lens um you just see the like spontaneity of it and you're like wow i could have that experience you know what's a cool game what minecraft yeah yeah <laughs> Yes, exactly. I keep it's weird to me how many conversations Minecraft. Like, sorry, I know that's like it's, I said that like an old dad on purpose. Yeah, right. I'm gonna blow. You. Old dad still can can still teach you a thing or two. No, sorry, I, I'm thinking about this because nearly every conversation <laughs> well, no that is had dad. about any weird modern trend in gaming, if it's not esports. Related, yeah. it <laughs> probably came from Minecraft at this point, which is fucking weird. Or at least Minecraft is a good exemplar of it, right? Like, I think, I think that it doesn't always of, necessarily come from Minecraft. A ton of the big YouTube Let's Play streaming guys came oh, out that's of true. Minecraft from that scene. Also, I the whole early yeah, access yeah, yeah. Uh, I you were pay model about, came I from Minecraft. Meant, yeah, okay. The fixation on really brutal opening open world stuff didn't come from Minecraft, but I yeah. think Minecraft introduced a ton of people yeah, to that as an appealing concept. Certain, like, yeah. In the modern area. For better or worse, Minecraft made everyone put voxel-esque cubes in their goddamn game, but yes. whatever. Um, it's it's weird. Like I, I didn't think about Let's Play and Minecraft until I remembered Yogg's Cast, Yogg's which Cast is, is just like, one, yeah. that's just a whole crew of YouTube streamers yeah. who flew out of Minecraft, but there's a <laughs> ton of... And now we're individually all huge. It's crazy. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. I was only, um, I've only recently even become aware of most of this stuff, to be honest. Like, I had never heard of that Pew, PewDiePie game guy, guy until, like, yeah. three days ago when we were, when you were showing me his yeah. stuff. Like, I didn't even know what that was. And then the Yogg's, <clears throat> there was a, there's a Yogg's cast guy who's been playing Space Space, and I wasn't familiar with that. Um, but it's huge. Like, I don't know, how, the, I don't know the, how I've been unaware of it. He's the largest thing on YouTube. Yeah. That guy. Yeah. 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 It's weird. I don't know, that's shocking. It's, were you going to say something about this, too, Nick? Um. Uh. Yeah. I was. I lost my train of thought, though. Oh, sorry. I distracted uh, you with Minecraft. Mm. Actually, um, it's interesting. Oh, sorry. Um. Did you have a? No. Go, go. Oh, uh, you were about to have your train of thought back. Yeah, anyway, Chris yeah, and I are gonna yeah, talk. It's fine. I, I. I feel bad for bringing this up because I haven't read. It, I haven't read it yet. But it's an argument that I could imagine being made very convincingly. Patrick Klepek wrote something about. Fuck. I, I wish I'd read it. This is gonna sound stupid. About how he is concerned that let's plays might be doing harm to the horror genre. And I haven't read oh. the article because I suck, but I intended to. And I could imagine one reason one might say that is because they kind of subvert the entire purpose. Whereas, well, yeah. you know, a, a, a let's play of Minecraft or like Crusader Kings or Spelunky or whatever, like those games are enjoyable to watch for the reasons they're enjoyable to play, even if it's a different feeling to play it as to watch it. But that's totally different with a lot of people who stream horror games. And it's just funny because they freak out. God, I really want to watch that. Well, that, the thing about that, though, is the person who's watching it freaks out. But I think people at home still get shocked by the scares to a certain degree. God, I really want to read this article. Okay, I'm going to read it now. I know, me I too. Because yeah. it raises a billion weird questions, especially given that he's a guy who does a series 
that is live streaming him playing horror games. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, I could be totally miss. I could be totally misassume, like not, incorrectly assuming what his actual argument is. No, I don't no, know. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah. I, I didn't think we were going to talk about this today, so I didn't occur to me to. Sorry, no. They were to read in time because I'm the worst. Chris recommends. <laughs> it does seem like there are going to be a lot of games made for this purpose, though, made with all of us in mind. It's yeah. weird. It's really weird. It's, to think I, about. Think like, it's like, I think. Oh it's man, overall. like Ken Levine, did, like last week, talked about how he wants to make a, a fucking like story simulator or whatever that's going to iterate a million. You know, yeah. I mean, like that's that's was that was that because. <clears throat> streaming destroys bespoke content in games uh he specifically mentioned the fact that when you play through bioshock once you're done with the game and that's it i mean it's it's, it's not it's not really about he, he didn't mention streaming but i feel like that that's i think the walking man, dead you build that into modern consoles got a huge bump because of streaming stuff like pewdiepie played through all those episodes and it was a big yeah like that like six months that was a big drop for him whenever those things would come out yeah and I think the only reason that that game actually survived being streamed as aggressively as it was was because the audience would watch and say I would do something different. Right. And whether or not their experience was any different yeah. is is who knows. But right. because that game was a little, like just ten percent less linear feeling than maybe a Bioshock yeah. type game. Yeah. I think that it that Let's Play still drove sales, even though there were all, I'm sure it also lost sales due to spectators who just watched sure. the YouTube streams or whatever. Yeah. Probably not many, actually. Yeah, I don't think so. And I think it's actually you would, I would bet that people would be surprised. I have no idea. But the like, let's that let's play <clears> explosion <throat> on that game surprised me because that yeah. was the first time I'd ever seen that community. Yeah, yeah. And it clearly. Well, that's why you know I do, I don't understand when companies uh, freak out about that stuff and try and shut it down because it yeah. really it really is counterproductive. It Especially like if it's, it's just... a if it's a game where the, <clears throat> where the streamer is never going to play the entirety of the game, or like in the yeah. case, or they're playing the the. It, yeah, it just makes people want to get ahead of the next episode of the Let's Play by buying it and seeing it for themselves, and then seeing how the yep. other person responds to their content or to yeah. their to that content. The way that if you like a game, you go and read all the reviews to see what the reviewers have to say about it mm-hmm. to validate your own thoughts. Yeah. So sorry, uh, I just really quickly skimmed Patrick's article because uh-huh. um, I I was so annoyed at myself for not having any more context <laughs> on it about it. Um, Actually, his argument is totally different than the one than the one that I sort of oh. supposed it might have been. His argument is that um, there there might be a class of person who uh, prefers to simply watch the game being played, regardless. I think of whether it's done, you know, taking the game at face value or or kind of just being a goofy um, like set of hijinks. Like the he he's saying. This might be harmful to sales in the long term if people feel they can just watch the game and still get whatever mm-hmm. measure of enjoyment they would have gotten from playing it. I'm actually less. I'm not. That doesn't. That's what I, we're I don't just, find we were that just talking about that. I don't, okay. Yeah. I don't. I don't Sorry. Uh, yeah. I just took a break from listening to you guys talk yeah, so that yeah, yeah. I could summarize something you were already talking about <laughs> that I didn't hear. I mean, I, we, I think we're all on the same page. I don't. I don't. I. I would tend to disagree, but. Well, what's probably going to end up happening, and what probably already happens a little bit, is that people will start. Developers will start using like the YouTube monetization content check shit to just say this video can stay up, but we get fifteen percent of the ad revenue from it. I mean, that's that already mm. happens with music videos and TV yeah. clips and all sorts of stuff. Mm, perhaps, perhaps I don't know, or they won't. Yeah, I mean, the fact that they're building Twitch into consoles, it's like, ugh, man, what? Where do you draw the line on this stuff? You know, well, that's a that's, it's gonna be that's hard, a slightly that's different be... situation because that, in that case, you have to actually buy the console, which is probably a different person than the audience member Patrick is talking about, which is someone who sits at work and just leaves someone's Minecraft stream running in the in the corner or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Well, yeah, we were talking. We were talking the other day, Nick, where I was uh, here at the Out of Thumbs office, and you were at home, and you were like, "Oh, I'm going to do this Blunky Daily challenge," and I was like, "Man, I wish, you know, I wish we could just." I could just spectate you yeah. on Steam. Oh, yeah, yeah. You were talking about how you do that with Dota. Right. And it would, like, I could totally imagine Valve just introducing that into the Steam overlay as yeah. just... Because, Get ready for that to show up, right? If they've yeah. got the... I hope the, so. I mean, yeah. XSplit already exists. Well, not even like, that, but just because of the SteamOS stuff where your Steam desktop... Oh, it's already streaming anyway. It's a streaming yeah. server. <laughs> so why not just unlock that to your friends yeah. as a yeah. global Steam spectator yeah. thing? Yeah. Spoiler, that's clearly going to be a thing That in would there. be awesome. It'd be pretty good. Why wouldn't it be? I mean, if only, why, if only why not? Steam right? Like, podcast is the, into it too. <laughs> yeah, if only. Where's those yeah. monetizable podcasts? <laughs> podcasts are so. It's such a bummer. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> 
Why has no one figured out you know, how you to know do what? real things with podcasts? I know what the answer is. What? Yeah. And it is server side RSS feed generation. <laughs> <laughs> well, that already is how they're generated. I mean, I mean, you just mean abuse. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, you just mean abuse. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, it seems like podcasts. There should they should get some fucking attention valves. Apple, whoever the fuck. <laughs> what? Whoever stops not making them. Not, <laughs> Who makes podcasts? No lots, love for dead. Lots lots full of, blast here. Like what? Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> Who? Seems like someone should love me. I don't know. <laughs> you. <laughs> I don't know what I'm fucking saying. Right. If you have a question, write us at questions at idlethumbs.net. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Rate us on iTunes. A One five. through five. <laughs> <laughs> rate us. <laughs> rate us what you think you, we deserve. We would appreciate the feedback. And you know what it is, Nick? What? It's October 23rd, 2013. This is Idle Thumbs 129, and I'm Chris Remo. I'm Jake Rodkin. And I'm Nick Reckon. Hey, Nick. Hey. What would you guys do if I said literally nothing for this entire podcast? We would probably not release the podcast. <laughs> I mean, or maybe we'd pretend that you were back there. Door like, well, path like, of Vital Thumbs. God, that would be nothing. really interesting. Yeah. Like if I said one thing at the beginning to get started right. and then just kind of just, just sat here. Well, you want to give it a shot. Didn't say a single thing. Yeah, let's, no. We can- <laughs> That's weird. Now that I've said it, it would be really weird. It would be like doing an experiment. You should yeah. have, in fact, tried to conduct that experiment. I know, I know, fine. I know. Fuck, damn it. This may, in fact, be an experiment. This may, in fact, <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right, when you least expect it. Yeah, yeah, what people don't know is this is our high concept Stanley Parable themed <laughs> episode. It, it is. Where we do wacky things and keep starting the episode over again. Actually, that was last week uh, when we actually started <laughs> the episode right. over again 10 times because it was a disaster. And you know what it is, Nick? What? It's February 19th, 2009. Nick Brecken writes in all caps This is a message to Nick Brecken from the past. Stop. <laughs> Talk what? about interview with EA Black Box, <laughs> RE, Valve, and Steam. Stop. Itchy, itchy, itchy. This is a reminder. <laughs>